Across the multiverse, there are various planes with different cultures and styles. While each plane has its own world soul that influences those planes to varying degrees, the residents of those planes are more likely to revere powerful beings rather than the plane itself. Even among the harshest of climates, Kaldheim has gods that can be worshipped, revered, and feared. However, unlike some other planes, the various gods of Kaldheim have changed and been usurped. In the beginning, various cosmos monsters existed. These monsters held eldritch knowledge that the inhabitants of Kaldheim revered and learned upon, where this knowledge has given some inhabitants divine worship themselves. These previous deities were then usurped and replaced by another pantheon by the hands of Alrond and his desire to unravel the secrets of the universe. During the birth of the World Tree, the Cosmos Monsters came into existence, alongside the realms, each powerful and unique, taking the form of an animal that would later inhabit the Ten Realms. As time went on and their actions influenced the realms, some beings took reverence in certain monsters. The biggest in both size and worship is Koma, the Cosmos Serpent, a being that feeds off the roots of the World Tree and can split itself into smaller segments that traverse the World Tree independently. Its venom is used in rituals by the two races of elves who revere the serpent as the destroyer and bringer of new realms. Its colossal size doesn't deter others from inspiring its demise, as Finn, a human from the realm of Bredegard, wishes to slay the cosmic monster. In one of his many attempts, he managed to injure the serpent whose wound splashes poisonous blood onto him. The blood was absorbed into Finn's body, which mutated his own blood into poison. As seen with Finn, the Cosmos monsters are able to bestow powers to lesser beings, whether willingly or not. An example of a willing blessing was with the Cosmos wolf Sarulf. Sarulf was created alongside Coma, where he wandered the realms, destroying the homes and cities of civilized folk. Sarulf has two children, Kit, a little wolf that lives with a human on Bredegard, and Lukia, a copper wolf who helped and accompanied the Anir Lathril. Lathril managed to save Kit from a group of kidnappers, and as a way to say thank you, Sarulf blessed the elves with the power to traverse territories controlled by wild animals, and the ability to speak to them. Now trapped in the seven Jaspara trees of Skemfar, the Anir were the former gods of Kaldheim. The only named Anir we know of is Lathril Queen of the Elves, whose crown is still worn by elven royalty to this day. She has a tale still reciting her birth, history and ascent to godhood, through the slaughter of Edomor, an unknown cosmos monster. Lathril and the other Anir were the main gods of Kaldheim up until the Skodi arose, through the actions of Alrond and his desire to unravel the various secrets of Kaldheim and the World Tree. Alrond is the head patriarch of the Skodi pantheon. He was born human and through his actions with Essica, as well as his biological and adopted children, his new family achieved divinity. Before his children were born, he made it his goal to combat and learn from every cosmos monster. Most he slew, some he extracted knowledge from, and two he even made a bond with. The most notable cosmos monster he's associated with is his raven Haka, who can travel along the branches of the world tree to gather information from the other realms. During Alrin's crusade for cosmos monsters, he found a baby stashed in an eagle's nest. He would deliver this baby to the stead of the dwarf king of the realm Axgard, where the child would be cared for by Dwarven royalty for 20 years. This child would later be Halvar, God of Battle, where he was raised and trained in a combat-oriented society by the best mentors of the realm. Halvar was the one to split the elven race into the Wood and Shadow Elves, with the help of the Dwarven made axe, Galdramel. Continuing on with his hunt, Alrond wanted information from the World Tree itself, so he tapped into it with runic magic. These runes then affected the tree where it birthed Essica and Turgrid. It isn't known what Alrin did with the two children, however tales describe that when Turgrid was a baby, her cries were in an unknown language that caused anyone to hear it to go temporarily mad. She would later become the god of fear, as her own shadow gained a murderous appetite when she was four, coming to life and trying to kill her. It's only kept at bay now because of the lantern she possesses. Her sister Essica is more fortunate as she felt an innate connection to the world tree. Through this, she created the Cosmos Elixir, a drink that bestows its consumer with agelessness and divine ability. When an issue arose during his hunt, Arund went to his brother Jorn for help. Jorn has an expertise in navigating and tracking things through the cosmos, making him an essential part to Alrin's mission. 
This time spent together led the two to still having a strong relationship, with John is always ready to return from his wanderings when the Scotty needs his help. On one adventure, Alrond was nearly killed. He only survived because he was saved by the founder of the Beskir clan, Hurik. As eternal thanks and gratitude, he bestowed the gift Feltmark to Hurik, whose descendants still possess it to this day. After Alrond's crusade against the Cosmos monsters, he met one that took the form of a dolphin. This dolphin entered the God's Realm, a realm outside of the main ten, taking on the form of a human called Cosima, and declaring that she was divine. While she doesn't live with the other Scoti now, preferring the Aurora Oceans between the realms, Gossima did live with Alrond for 20 years, where the two had three children, Torolf, Bergi, and Kolvori. Torolf is the hot-headed eldest of the three. While his father is disappointed in his lack of focus in helping the Scoti, he doesn't care as he is more concerned with overcoming challenges with great difficulty. He has been known to do what is thought impossible and laugh at the face of people who thought it was. However, this lack of care for what his father thinks has caused disputes between the Scoti family. Bergi is the inquisitive middle child who recites stories and sagas of the realms. She is always the life of the party and enjoys starting rabbles and rowdiness in people. She has occasionally claimed that the actions of her older brother were done by her, and boasts about her great deeds. Once she hired a dwarf to follow Torolf and record down his actions for her storytelling. Torolf got annoyed by the dwarf's presence and proceeded to throw them off a cliff. Bergi responded to this by hiring a sneakier dwarf. Youngest of the three is Kolvori, who obsesses over the beauty and extravagance of nature and life. She can go on for hours explaining the craftsmanship of a spider's web and the awe of baby animals. Above all else though, she cares about family and connection. She wishes that the Skirti would settle their differences and she usually acts as a mediator between family disputes. Though her goals are noble, most of the other gods simply don't care, with one of them still having the same concerns as her, yet because of his apathy, can't stand Kolvori's company. Egon, god of death, has the same concerns about the Skoti, yet due to his brash attitude and young appearance, is disregarded by the other Skoti. Being the actual eldest of the family, he can see the downfall of their actions, but due to his backward aging, he appears to be young and naive. He was given the title of Lord High Ruler of Isvel after he tricked King Narfi of Karfel into giving him an undead army, which he turned the tide of the battle between the Skoti and the Aenir with. Nowadays, he's constantly trying to enter Starnheim, however, is thwarted by the Valkyries and the Spirit Rana every time. Raidane, the God of Justice, is the embodiment of it. She bases her justice off fairness, an eye for an eye. With this, mortals come to her to convince her to help them, presenting their quarry. If she deems it so, without hesitation and another thought, she will assist them. She will always demand a sacrifice of equal value to the crime, including blood. She has special regards towards the Beskir clan, as their founder saved Alrin's life. Last of the gods, and the one we know little of, is Volki, God of Lies. He occasionally played tricks on all the other gods in fun and demeaning ways, until he was imprisoned and impersonated by Tybalt. His most notable action was tricking Torolf, who in his stupor, transported the Hall of Gods from the secluded god realm to Isfel. Volki was last seen trapped inside of an ice pillar on Karfel. The gods of Kaldheim are fickle individuals with their own egos and quarries. During the events of March Machines, however, they managed to work together to thwart the Phyrexian forces that invaded their home. While most of the Cosmos monsters were completed and killed, the gods managed to save their home. Through their efforts though, they had to burn down the World Tree. Essica was the most affected by this action, however in the aftermath it is shown that the World Tree was regrowing once more. Perhaps once we go back to Kaldheim in a few years, we'll witness the gods in their weakened state due to their source of power being destroyed. Or perhaps we'll see the rise of the Anir again, as the Elves, with the help of Harald and Tyvar, seem to be growing in influence and power. Thank you for watching. Kaldheim is a wonderful setting that I hope to continue in further videos. If there's anything from Kaldheim you want explored, please tell me in the comments. I'm Gearhead, and we'll discuss more next time.